you've ever seen my Instagram feed, especially from like a few months ago, you would have seen an entire collection of pictures of warning signs. So these are signs, you know, not just stop signs, but signs about kids on a playground or if you touch a cement mixer, what's going to happen to your hand. All these great ways in which people show text and icons and different types of illustrations. And I got in the habit of collecting those photographs uh, because of today's guest on the One Chart at a Time video series. I asked my good friend from National Geographic, Kennedy Elliott, to come on the program and talk about the cycle graph, or as you'll see, the cycle plot, uh, as a way to show changes over time. So I'm going to hand it over to Kennedy so you can learn more about the cycle plot. Hi, my name is Kennedy Elliott, and I'm going to talk about cycle plots. Cycle plots are very peculiar types of charts. They encode a lot of information, but your data set has to be just right to be able to use them. They show two main things. One is a seasonal trend and the other is a long-term trend. And I actually had a lot of trouble finding information about them online. I had to Google cycle plots and not cycle charts. So I'm gonna be calling them cycle plots for the rest of the video. I define cycle plots as a chart that shows a long-term trend over several segments of a seasonal trend. And that sounds really confusing. So I'm just gonna show you an example and you're gonna get it right away. I had a lot of trouble finding uh, versions of cycle plots out in the wild. So please, if you know of any cycle plots in the wild, please post them in the comments. I would love to see them. This is the first cycle plot that I ever sh uh, saw. And it was shown to me by the wonderful Rob Simmon, who also has a video in the series. I would highly encourage you to watch it. I am sure it's brilliant. This chart is showing monthly mean Arctic sea ice extent um, for many, many years. And the y-axis is fairly straightforward. We see the, uh, this, uh, the, uh, the sea ice extent in millions of square kilometers. The x-axis is where all the fun is happening. Um, each of these larger columns represent a single month out of the year. And the black lines show a trend line um, from 1979 to 2013. And, um, and and then this one chart, we're able to, able to again see the seasonal trend and the long-term trend of the Arctic sea ice extent. We see where it is at its minimum every year around September after the warmer summer months, and where it's at its maximum after the cooler months. And um, it's really just a lovely way to display this data. We see so much, uh, so so much, so many trends in this single chart. And I wanted to show you another one that Rob did. This is of the same data and he has grouped the data into quarters. And I think that this is still an effective way to show the seasonal and the long-term trend for this Arctic sea ice. I wanted to show this chart. This chart is um, one that shows wildlife strikes on planes in the US from 2000 to 2010. And we, again, we see the seasonal trend and a long-term trend. I like the fact that this one has this optional feature, which is the average line on each of these columns. This reinforces the seasonal average, the seasonal average for that month, or I guess the monthly average. And therefore, you can see the seasonal trend a little bit more clearly as you glance at the chart. There are some long-term trends that are very interesting that are happening. There's not much of a not much of a variation in February and January, and then when we get to July and August, there is a lot of variation, which could be very interesting to the story that you're telling with this. Down here, we have instead of a monthly average line, we have a line of best fit, which again will reinforce uh, the long-term trend over the seasonal trend, um, which I think is an optional, a very interesting optional feature you can put on your chart. This one really shows how you can give cycle plots different design treatments to, to enhance certain um, aspects of the data. This chart has chosen to shade in between the min and max values. So we're, you're seeing this gap widen and decrease in certain areas of the chart. It's not so um, stark. And, and I think this chart is a, a little bit um, noisy for a first time viewer of a, of a cycle chart, sorry, cycle plot. Someone who hasn't seen one before might come to this and be slightly confused. It might take them a little while to figure out what's going on. But um, I think that this is important to show nonetheless. This one is a little similar. This is the only cycle plot that I have done. And this was um, several years ago for the Washington Post. I uh, chose to shade in the min and max values of each individual month. And you can really see how wide the spread is on these uh, the, the, the months where the Arctic sea ice is at a minimum and that's in August and September. 
And so that is obviously very worrying and adds to part of the story here. Um, my subhead is Arctic sea ice extent has experienced an unmistakable downward trend in every single month since 1979. And that is a very loaded statement. And this, this chart, I could not think of a better chart to explain that in one, in one take than a cycle plot. I wanted to show this chart because up until now, we've been looking at cycle plots that show monthly seasonality or seasonality over several months um, across many years. And this one is showing seasonality over a single, single day in terms of the hours that make up the day. And then each of these lines represent um, the hours through the week, or I guess the days through the week. And this is showing taxi cab rides over all of the hours in a day over the days of the week. And I have no idea if this data is accurate, but I'm using it for an example only. And you can see that there is just so much information here. It would be really fun to dive down into this and see everything going on. I wanna stop for a second and, and say that it's obvious probably now that seasonal plots, um, I'm sorry, cycle plots are really, it's really important to do, to have two things. One is, um, the seasonality has to be important to your story. And also the long-term trend has to also be important to your story. It doesn't necessarily need to fluctuate. Maybe it's important to your story that it, the trend line stays the same for both of those aspects, but both have to be important to telling your story. And I also wanted to say that as you've seen in some of these examples, the apps, uh, sorry, the average line, the monthly average line in the line of best fit can also be additional features that you can pull into your chart to encode more or reinforce certain aspects of your data set or your story. And lastly, I really want to emphasize that categorical, categorical data is not appropriate for these charts. Sequent it must have sequential data. And I don't say that it should be continuous time data, because I think that as long as it's sequential, you'll be fine. For example, if I wanted to chart my heart rate over before, during, and after a workout, you, I think that would work really well with the cycle plot. And that's just sequential. That's not continuous. Um, and, to fur and to further, uh, you know, nail down that point, I want to show you a very lovely chart by the New York Times. It is um, small multiples of categorical data um, over uh, these professions. Each, each column is a certain profession. And people might think, well, a cycle plot is just a uh, collection of small multiples. And that is very not true. It's, it's very purposely sequential. And this is, um, you know, these are slope charts in each of these columns, but you could easily imagine them to be line charts. Um, if the data was available. And um, it's just important to note that this is what, this would be a perfect visualization for categorical, categorical data, but cycle plots, it's, it's not the case. And one more thing, I wanted to walk through an example of the genesis of maybe exploring different visualizations for your data set and one where cycle plots would be great. And the path that you might take when kind of exploring how to visualize a data set. So I'm, I've chosen to uh, represent the Arctic sea ice extent from 1978 to 2020. And this table is supposed to mimic what a spreadsheet might look like if you were given a spreadsheet of this data and you were told to find a way to visualize it. Um, I, you can certainly choose to do it as a table. We all know the pros and cons from visualizing um, things as tables. And um, you know that's certainly uh, justified. On the right, I just wanna note that there are month, uh, sorry, yearly averages calculated here. And if you wanted to plot this on a chart, it would look like this. These wild oscillations obviously indicate that there could be some seasonality here. It's really hard to tell at this scale. You'd really have to drill down, but this chart is just really hard to kind of extract too much information from it other than there seems to be a slight decrease here um, and it could be seasonal. Um, here is just the yearly average sea, sea ice extent. And if you start at 1978 and scroll down to 2020, you could definitely see, you definitely see um, a lessening. You see a downward trend in sea ice extent. Here we have a line chart where every uh, line is a particular year and the months are plotted from each line. You see, you definitely see the seasonal trend here. That's definitely coming out. And in fact, you see this chart a lot online. This is a very common one to see. I've taken the liberty of bolding the most recent five years worth of data. And um, they all fall at the very bottom of this collection of lines, which could give you the indication that uh, there is a downward trend happening here. Still really hard to know for sure. 
Uh, and this chart is pretty noisy to see that downward trend over the several years worth of data. And so that's where this chart kind of falls short. Um, here is uh, bar charts thrown another way. These are the monthly averages through all of the year. So this January line will encode all of the January, the average of all the Januaries from 1978 to 2020. And then finally, we have arrived at the cycle plot, which is um, showing, uh, yeah, as you, it looks very similar to the to the two charts shown before. Um, they are you're really seeing this seasonal aspect as well as a long-term trend. It is the best of all of the worlds that I've shown you so far. And um, it has an average line. Again, that's optional. Um, but if you were to superimpose this bar chart of monthly averages onto this, uh, this chart, the tops of those green bars would align perfectly with, the with, with where these black lines are. So it's, it's important to note that this chart is really showing you the culmination of most of the previous charts before this, um, which is really extraordinary. One more thing before I click off of this example, uh, I've done something purposeful with the colors here. And that is the, the purple here um, just sort of shows the, I don't know, the true values um, without any kind of like additional um, thought. And the blue is our, our charts where I've um, structured the data by grouping by year first and then month. These lines are by year, obviously each line is a year, and then I plotted the months into each line. And the green is where I have structured the data by grouping the month first and then the year. So I've had to collect all of the values for each month, and then I've parsed the ones by year and done something special with the year. Again, the cycle chart is, is just the same. I've grouped by month first and by year. So for those of you who think about data structure and what that would look like, that might be important for you to note. Anyway, that is the end of my video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I look forward to seeing the comments below. Thank you so much. All right, bye. And thanks to Kennedy for that great review. I especially love the way she showed walking through her own data and all the various ways that she could plot changes over time and how in this case, the cycle plot might be one of the preferred choices. So it's just another way to show changes over time, lots of ways to do so. And if you come back tomorrow, we're gonna to talk about yet another way to visualize your data that shows a change over time. So thanks for tuning in and I will see you tomorrow.